Douglas, I always, play, I Douglas always, before you speak, I, I, always, I want to play a clip mm. of Nigel Farage talking about this and then come to you. Commentary and behaviours that do not align with the bank's purpose and values have been demonstrated. So the bank has a series of values. The bank has a series of political positions. And as for purpose, well, I thought the purpose of companies was to act ethically, yes, of course, but to return to their shareholders dividends. And in this case, folks, do you know who the shareholders are? It's you and me. All right, Douglas, your view of this. Well, first of all, it's always uh, delicious when a socialist sets up a binary uh, in the way that Grace just did. Uh, if there's something bad in capitalism, the only alternative is socialism. Of course it is. It always is for socialists, isn't it? Uh, but it is lovely hearing Grace... <laughs> She's uh, even uh, grinning defending. at that. You've even <laughs> got a lovely. grinning in self-awareness. I'm deliberately not interrupting. Grinning in self-awareness. Go on, and it's, it's, lo it's lovely hearing Grace defend Coots Bank. It's a ter terrific position for a socialist to be in. Uh, I, I, look, I would put it this I don't way. believe the Coots most, Bank the most exist, important, the most important, The most important thing in this is the old shoe on the other foot uh, uh, yeah. scenario, isn't it, Piers? Here's, here's a good example. I mean, Grace was a supporter of Jeremy Corbyn. Jeremy Corbyn led a very racist period in the Labour Party's history where female Jewish MPs were hounded out of the party and the Equality and Human Rights Commission found that the Labour Party had a serious problem with racism. Now, here's the thing. I don't agree with anything that Jeremy Corbyn believes, probably not, no more than I agree with anything that Grace believes. Uh, but if Coots Bank, I don't know if, uh, if Mr Corbyn would bank with Coots, but whoever he banked with, if they said that because of Mr Corbyn's association with racists and racism and terrorists and so on, he he shouldn't be allowed to have a bank yeah. in the UK. I would defend him to the hilt. Yeah. Uh, because I know where this goes. The Canadian government, uh, ultra-dippy Trudeau in Canada, has presided over a system in the last 18 months in which if you're an opponent of his government and actually come out and protest, as people did last year, mm. you can get debanked. Just think about that again for a moment. Uh, it, we were talking about protests earlier. That if you protest against the government, you can lose the right to bank I in think a cashless that is economy so here's the thing wrong. we know How where this we... leads Perhaps. We know where this leads. How and I would suggest that anyone who believes in freedom, including freedom of the press, freedom of speech, and much more, should yeah. care How deeply when their political foes, even when their political the right foes are the people, even when their political foes who they would love to kick in the nuts get it, they should defend those people's Douglas, rights. How might we deliver have. an economy in which everyone has the right to a bank account? As a basic human right, you have the right to a bank account. There's no way you can get unbanked. Yeah, okay, well, um, but look, but look, oh, yeah. that clearly is. is. That, is, that, that, is. That, that is a debate for another day. It's I, really not. Here's what I would, say, here's what I would say about it. It's pertinent. Nigel Farage right went now. out of his way to try and wreck my opening night interview with Donald Trump for this show over a year ago. He literally went to Trump with all the worst things I said about Trump in the previous year and said, look at this, you can't do the interview. And Trump nearly pulled the plug. So I have absolutely zero reason to say anything supportive of Nigel Farage. And he works for a rival network as an amateur broadcaster. Um, again, that's another reason not to say anything nice about him. However, I've got to say, as a Coots customer myself, I find this very concerning. And I rang yes, them today to ask. I rang them to ask to speak to them today, but they, they they said they couldn't talk about it because by doing so they would be providing information about a client. I, I presume they mean Nigel well, Farage. But here's, here's my point about it. I have what some people consider controversial views. I don't think they're controversial, but I have quite strong views about other things. I'm not quite sure why his are deemed less acceptable in terms of being a banking customer in the UK well, you know what? the mine. I may not agree with him about a number of things. I'm just not sure why I tick boxes and he doesn't when it comes to a right to have an opinion yeah, it, in it what could I thought be anybody. was a, a free democracy. It could be, it's because the bank it could has be you deemed... tomorrow, Piers. It could be yeah. Grace the day after, me the, the day after that. Yeah, okay. The bank has deemed, Grace. based on an assessment of risk, which it yeah. has very professional people to do, they do, it said it is going to potentially, over the long run, damage our profits if we offer this person a okay, bank account. I, I, this is a decision that banks make every day, no, no, not I, to offer bank accounts yeah, to low-income customers I have to, to say close that branches. I, I don't, and it's wrong. I, having read the full details that appeared in The Telegraph today, 
I don't think there are grounds uh, that, that, and, that suit that. And also, I don't think Piers, there is any forget, damage to kids. But ultimately, and, and the bank is able to do it Coots because it's bank. a private bank. Don't forget, let's have public banking. Don't, don't forget that Coots lied and briefed a lie to the BBC, which mm. the BBC then reported. They're not interested in the truth that Coots. I'd get your money out, Piers. <laughs> well, we'll see.